Hello, good afternoon and uh, welcome to this press conference by um, Coalition Next. Um, we are here today at the Roche offices in Belgium um, and we will be talking to you about the Coffer project that Coalition Next is sending out. I am joined here today by um, my colleague uh, Pascal Bekash and Azel Mathieu and we will be having Dieter de Cour in a minute. We are here today to provide you with some answers about the call for projects. Maybe, maybe you might have some questions when you read through the application guide and we want to get on top of things. Now, if you're not familiar with Coalition Next Belgium, then um, maybe it's good to just introduce Coalition Next Belgium to you. Um, there's two things I'd like to, sh to share with you. One is, um, and that's maybe the most common question that I receive is that, are you in fact an association? Because there's so many associations in Belgium. I have to agree there, there are a lot of associations and definitely in the hospital business. But we are not an association. We are a process. We are a process that basically every company, every hospital and every startup is doing by themselves. Uh, which means that every company is doing the exact same thing. They are looking at the needs, they are looking for solutions and they are looking to implement those solutions. Well, with Coalition Next, what we believe in is that we believe that we, if we do this together, then we can do it better. And that is the basic of everything that Coalition Next is doing. Now, um, there's a second thing that I believe that we as Coalition Next do differently. And that is the fact that we focus on implementation. Because let's face it, if there's one thing difficult for a healthcare startup, it's to find the right places to implement. You need to find the right hospitals, you need to find the right person in a hospital, and that person at that moment needs to have the right budget and the right time, the resources to actually implement it. And so what we try to do with Coalition Next is actually make that bridge, making sure that healthcare startups can find that mean, that possibility to implement faster, because that is what we really want to achieve. And that is, by the way, how it all started, because it started in France, right, Pascal? Right. Um, it started in France, during COVID, and there you really wanted to implement digital solutions, right? Yes, absolutely. Actually, what happened uh, on March the 15th in France is what uh, we have been called by um, AstraZeneca, actually, that asked us, is it possible to um, provide innovative solutions to hospitals in order to give patients, especially in chronic disease, um, innovative solution to be connected to the hospital. Because the Prime Minister in France at this time said uh, chronic disease patients shall not go to the hospital. So it was of course a big problem for um, pharmaceutical industry and for hospitals. So they decided to gather together in order to um, uh, find innovative solution, digital solution, to help um, healthcare professional as well as patients. And so we launch in, in a big hurry, in big emergency, we launch an, um, a call for project and we got, we got more than 400 projects, uh, 400 answers. And finally, we, uh, we have been able to select 15 of them that were, uh, that were financially supported by pharmaceutical companies and uh, we have been able to deploy them in six months. So uh, we can say that uh, we succeeded in deploying quickly uh, yeah. these innovative solutions. That was pretty amazing indeed. I mean, the way that what, what you achieved in only six months, gathering all these parties, different parties together, and actually getting to that implementation to solve the, the biggest issue. But I have one more question for you, and that is how come companies came to you? Why did they choose you to set up Coalition Next? Because you're a co-founder of Digital Pharma Lab, right? Yes, I'm the co-founder uh, of Digital Pharma Lab together with Didier Tranchier, who is my, uh, my associate, my partner. And we have been able to, uh, uh, since uh, three years now, we have been able to uh, become uh, one of the first um, um, uh, tech accelerator? Yes, tech accelerator and uh, and um, uh, how would you say that in English, uh, Cabinet say. Conseil, you know? Ah, consultancy. Uh, <laughs> consultancy <yeah. laughs> uh, firm um, specialized in uh, innovation and uh, digitalization of uh, healthcare. So e-health. 
be honest. Working with pharmaceutical companies. Working companies. mainly with pharmaceutical and, and uh, medical devices companies. And that's why they come, came to you and to set it up. Yes, exactly. That's why AstraZeneca asked us. And um, uh, just to give um, uh, some uh, precision, uh, coalition uh, in France started with 25 uh, pharmaceutical and medical devices companies that's and 25 amazing. hospitals. That's amazing. That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And you said that there were immediately 15 startups implemented. Yes. But if I read the latest numbers, there were there are now about 30 different startups implemented in almost 80 different hospitals. Yes, absolutely. Because what was really surprising is at the end of 2020, yeah. after the COVID was not over, but uh, the pandemic less was less urgent. Yeah. Um, uh, the pharmaceutical company and the hospitals decided to continue the adventure and uh, they called it Coalition Next. So that's why uh, now we have a Coalition Next in Belgium as well. And um, with uh, 12 pharmaceutical companies and medical devices companies and 12 hospitals in France, private and public. And so uh, in 2021, we selected again uh, 12, uh, 12 um, projects, okay. and again in 2022, uh, we are going to select, uh, we are on the verge of implementing some, uh, some, some solutions. And so the, the question that I always ask, because I, I, I'm, I talk a lot with people in, in Belgium and companies in Belgium to implement Coalition Next and to be part of Coalition Next. Now the question that I get the most is, can you give us some examples about Startups that are implemented in hospitals yes. and uh, what is their success and why is it a success? Let, let, let me give uh, two examples. The first one is with Roche in France, as we are here in the Roche premises in, in, in Brussels. So Roche in France decided to uh, um, select and, and um, uh, financially support uh, a data solution of what they call avatarization. So it's okay. uh, like uh, anonymization. Mm -hmm of data coming from uh, the hospital of Brest in the uh, west, uh, western part of France. So a lot of data coming from this hospital. Um, the data are avatarized yeah. with an avatar, let's say. Okay. And uh, they are used by uh, Roche, uh, thanks to this startup, which is called Octopies. Okay. And uh, if it is possible, if the results are good, I mean, um, we cannot go back to the real patient. Mm -hmm. It means that we can avatarize a lot of data and use them uh, for clinical trial, for instance, for research and uh, for any kind of, uh, of medical research, etc., etc., or for marketing as well. So this is a first example. The second example is with um, a startup called Calmedica in France. Yes. Uh, Calmedica, when uh, we started with them, uh, it's, it's a startup that send text messages, okay. text messages um, written in, in large characters for older people. Okay. And uh, it's a kind of a chatbot with text messages. So don't forget your uh, meeting to the, uh, at the hospital tomorrow, uh, this kind of thing. And when we started with them, they were a very small company. Okay. Uh, they were awarded uh, by a coalition in, in France. And uh, thanks to that, now they, they have become one of the biggest um, digital health startups digital in, health startup in France, oh. sending one million texts a, a day. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's, a lot, that's, a lot of that's a lot of text. Now, so I, if I understand correctly, there's a, an advantage for the hospital, there's an advantage for the course. pharmaceutical companies, of course. and there's an advantage for the startups because they can grow. Absolutely. Uh, Calmedica is now, uh, you know, it, it was small, now it's one of the biggest, so... Calmedica, okay. In, in three years' time. That's a name to remember. But let's go back to Belgium now, because all of these nice stories in, in France is super nice. Um, but maybe we want to do the same thing, at least, or maybe even better in Belgium. Better, better. Um, <laughs> So, and we started in Belgium, actually. We started Coalition Next in Belgium about six months ago. It was mid-April. We were in the beginning in these offices at Roche uh, with only five of us. Um, remember that? Absolutely. That <laughs> um, but we grew really fast and we grew into a group of more than 20 organizations. And we are pretty hopeful that by the end of October, we might even reach 30 um, organizations. Um, but 
Yeah, what we have in Belgium is we have different partners, just as in France. We have pharmaceutical companies, we have hospitals, we also have home care organizations. And next to me, we have um, two of our, um, well, we actually have the president um, of Coalition Next Belgium, which is uh, Azel Mathieu, who is also the innovation lead at MSD. And we have um, Dieter de Cour, innovation lead at UZ Brussels. So tell me, I think Azel, the, the very first discussion that I had in Belgium um, to set up Coalition Next Belgium was with you, I believe. Yes. And you immediately said you wanted to, to, to get this thing going. Yeah. Why was that? Oh, there are several reasons. And yes, indeed, it was uh, around one year ago that we uh, started the discussions together. Um, in fact, there are two main reasons. Um, I've, the first one is that I've been working in the healthcare industry for more than 15 years, and I've been working in different setups. And um, the thing is that in Belgium, that sector is quite fragmented. It's siloed. Uh, so it's siloed from a geographical perspective, but also from a capabilities perspective. And uh, so you have the, the pharma industry, the biotech industry, the medtech industry, the e-health sector, you have the universities, the hospitals, the patient organizations. And in fact, um, having worked and having supported startups to bring their solution on the market, it's really a challenge for the, the adoption of those technologies to face a fragmented uh, ecosystem. And so I do see a value with Coalition Next because uh, it's, it really helps to, to build bridges between different players and stakeholders. That's, that's the first reason. The second reason is that you had that trend in the pharma industry of having uh, pharma industry involved in uh, startup acceleration programs. That's a very nice thing, but you all only work on the solution part. And here uh, you also work on the problem part. So you avoid to fall in love with your solution, but you look at the real challenges healthcare organizations and healthcare practitioners face. And for me, um, this has a lot of value uh, to really bridge the gap between uh, the challenges or help the, 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 the stakeholders to uh, overcome those challenges and bring the right solution at the right moment. So those are the two main reasons um, we, we value our, our participation to, uh, to Coalition Next. Yeah, that's nice to hear, and I, 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 do, I do, I think, recognize this, that um, it's hard to know what's happening in the market if, if, if you don't regularly talk to the market, to hospitals exactly. and to home care organizations. And that's why we also have a lot of hospitals. Uh, actually, we have a lot more hospitals in uh, Coalition Next than we have pharma companies. And that's, I think you were also one, Dieter, uh, the, one of the first ones that I talked to uh, about Coalition Next. And you were also very keen on, on, on joining. Um, what was the driver for a hospital like UZ Brussels to, uh, to join Coalition Next? Um, I think the main driver is that we are convinced that we are partners in healthcare and we can be partners in different ways. And I think we are just there as the consumer of a lot of things that are produced by the pharma. But I think there is a possible third way that we can be uh, or that we can shape a coalition and can, that we can shape the future of healthcare together. Uh, data is something that we have in common. We have different data, but we have some data in common as well. How shall we work with these? How shall we make sure that yeah, patient tracks, patient experience is improved uh, by cooperating? And I thought that it was an, it's an open call for co-designing uh, a possible future. And I think we need to, to take on this challenge and just talk and find one another to find possible different business models to continue. Yeah, I see. And indeed, I mean, people might, might wonder how we do this um, because there's a lot of associations and a lot of organizations that try to bring all stakeholders together. The way that we do it is we try to sit together every week. E each morning, it's uh, no, it's not each morning, but every <laughs> Thursday morning, <laughs> at least, um, to, to actually learn from each other and to build to go through the process that I was mentioning earlier. Um, now, when we started in Belgium, um, and I think this is an important thing, when, when France was starting, um, you had an urgency with COVID, yes. right? So it was very clear you needed to work on getting the regular care back on track again. In Belgium, we, we started one year and a half later, approximately. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, no, yeah, one year later, and I think it's, we didn't have the same urgency. And so the first thing that we did as a, as a, as a group was we, we defined our mission. Mm -hmm. uh, remember there was discussion that was even at AZ Maria Medlares that we worked together. Um, we, we worked on our mission, we defined ourselves as being a open healthcare ecosystem with private and public um, players who all bring their expertise together to work in that process that I was mentioning. The process that was about, you know, finding the needs, understanding the needs from each other, finding the solutions which, are, which we are doing right now and then trying to implement um, them. And the purpose of that, um, you know, process is to actually find the right um, uh, solutions that we can implement together with the healthcare um, providers. Um, and then the next thing that we did, because this is the mission, this is what Coalition Next is all about. We're an open healthcare ecosystem who talks about processes and who works in a process. But then we talked with all of the partners. We were 20 back then, almost, or 18 or something, I remember. And the first thing that we did was, what do you want to work about? What do you want to work on? And the two things that basically almost, I believe, every, every one of our members, actually we call them founders, um, is talking about um, was patient experience and um, integrated care. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And so this is the one thing that we want to achieve in Belgium. If it was having the regular care back on track again in Belgium, what we want to focus on is patient experience and integrated care. And so Azel, um, to you, why was patient experience so important for all of the, um, the members of Coalition Next? Mm -hmm. Because I do think that um, um, there, you, you mentioned that there, there was no emergency for us to uh, launch that coalition and at the same time there is a need and that has been highlighted by the pandemic uh, that we could improve thanks to uh, a good use of new technologies we could improve the patient experience and uh, patients are in need of a better experience and healthcare providers are in need for uh, better uh, integrated solutions to support those patients and we do believe that uh, technology is a meaning but not really an end in itself but that technology can really support better coordination better communication between the different stakeholders, between the patient and the uh, healthcare team, or between the GP and the specialist. And we do believe that um, the, the system would gain by a faster adoption of those technologies that came in support of the, uh, the healthcare providers and the, the patient. But at the center of all what we do, there is the patient. We do it for the patient, not for the technology as such. And so that was one of the reasons why we said in our vision that the patient experience is key, as well as the patient outcome, and that we want to achieve better integrated uh, care. Yeah, I, 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 I think I fully agree in the sense that in healthcare very often, patient experience or the experience that we have in healthcare is lagging a little bit the experience that we have in our general life. Yes. And so with all the technologies, by integrating it, we can definitely improve it. So I think that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons as well. You also mentioned collaboration and it makes me think of integrated care then. It was the second thing that came, came uh, about as being one of the big priorities that we, that we all, of, all of us wanted to work on. Um, why is integrated care so important in Belgium or, or specifically for all the founders of Coalition Next? But I think in general, uh, or why I think it's important is that it's a continuity of care and it's very fragmented uh, where every healthcare provider can interfere in the process of the patient and that's getting more fragmented and because of cost related and, and how the, the government is reimbursing etc everything is pushed more outside hospitals uh, and I think in the long run now it's experience, but we have to build towards keeping people healthy. Exactly. This means even more outside of hospitals. This does not mean that there is no future role for hospitals. Even in the future, there will be a role for hospitals because we have some expertise that we can share, but we need to yeah, um, work with the patient to get him healthy again or to keep him healthy and that demands a cooperation between first line, second line, but even I think these terms are getting a uh, flu. Flu. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would agree, I would agree. And by the way, it's, it's, it's not even an, um, by accident um, that integrated care was so, uh, so important because I think 
I presented in a hospital, uh, I think it was Azit Maria Midleres, uh, about Coalition Next and what we could do. And the first thing that the CEO said there was, you need to include the home care organizations because integrated care is so important. And that was even before we did the exercise. So it just confirms how, how, how important integrated care is. So with Coalition Next Belgium, what we try to do um, now is we really want to um, find solutions that above everything, beyond every potential need that you might imagine, um, that they help in improving the patient experience and that they help in improving the integrated care making sure that the, there's a continuity of care, as Dieter um, said before. But that is very generic still. This is the, the big thing that we want to want to solve, of course. But the next thing is then, what are the needs? Um, and what I've learned from France, what France did as well every time again, is they did a workshop with all of the, the members. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I should say founders. Yes, founders. Um, <laughs> and I'll explain why, because I didn't do it in the beginning. But the difference between members and founders in, um, is that here, the members of Coalition Next, um, they are actually driving everything. Um, I'm, I'm the one who is leading everything in Belgium, but everything means I just lead that one hour meeting with every, all of us. Um, I try to go to that process I was talking about, but every decision, every um, input, every feedback, every need is driven by all of the members. And so without these members, there wouldn't, know, there wouldn't be any um, Coalition um, Next Belgium. So that's why we call them founders. They are the founders of Coalition Next, and I'm just um, a handyman who just helps along um, the way. And so what we did in that process is we did the workshop. I think we did it over six weeks. So every Thursday morning uh, for six weeks long, we had a workshop with all of them and a, a virtual whiteboard. Um, trying to define what are the needs that we are thinking or that we that we believe that needs to be solved and uh, We came about with three needs as you can see on the next slides and you can read them there But I'll read them for you one is the we want to enable prevention and in doing so we want to make sure that um, the access to healthcare is increased a second one is we want to accelerate the diagnosis and make sure that there's a smoothening of everything that is the the, the, the treatment pathways, as is so important in Belgium these days. And finally, coming back to integrated care, we want to smoothen the whole process of remote care. Now, um, the startups that are online, um, they, they could read, of course, the, um, the application guides, but maybe they might want to hear from, from either one of you um, about what it means to you as a hospital or a pharmaceutical company, each of these three things. And, Maybe let's start with the, with the first one, um, enabling prevention and an accurate access to healthcare. Why is it important um, for a hospital, for example? Um, um, in general, for a hospital, mainly not. I think for the patient, it's better if we can tackle an illness earlier on in the process than the outcome or the possible outcome for the patients is better. Yeah. Uh, so if we can interfere earlier in uh, the diagnose, then the treatment can be easier, uh, less hard for the person, um, and that there is more quality of life that we can still offer to the patient. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times we see that patients come to the hospital, but it's already too, too late, late to yeah. cure them. Which was already the case in France as well with the regular care, and, and we saw that as well with a lot of uh, oncology diagnoses who were done way too late. Now. Um, I can imagine that pharmaceutical companies have exactly the same feeling. They also want to make sure that the um, diagnosis goes quicker, right? Yes, exactly. And you mentioned an oncology and uh, for several cancers, they are taken or diagnosed too late. Uh, so uh, it would be fine. We are in favor of uh, earlier detection of those mm. uh, cancer and even prevention. So yes, it's, uh, it's critical and uh, very important for us to really foster uh, prevention and preventing tools in Belgium. The challenge is that uh, the business model of those kind of solutions uh, might be a challenge. And so we are here to, uh, to support those uh, companies to find uh, the right business model and to make, uh, to make their test and proof implementation stuff in, um, thanks to a coalition next. Yeah. Uh, and linked to that, uh, there is the second theme 
that is also the early diagnosis. It's yeah. a bit in the same vein. The idea was really to focus on key steps in the patient pathway, citizen enfin, pathway, uh, starting with the prevention, but also uh, the early or the more accurate or rapid diagnosis because there are some diseases that are uh, difficult to diagnose and what are the tools that can be provided to healthcare providers to really support them in uh, a faster diagnosis or what are the, 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 the data that the patient need to have it with him for faster diagnosis. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then of course once the diagnosis is there we have the treatment pathways. In the treatment pathways you have different physicians, different healthcare organizations as well. Um, and then we need to make sure that that is smoothened uh, as well. I can imagine that that is important for in, in your line of work. I think well. everybody has had this at some point in their life. You don't want to explain two, three, four times what you're coping with or what you're having. You assume that if you once gave the information, that all this information is absorbed by every other following partner in the step. And I think it's our role as professionals to move on. To, to pass on this information towards another, just to make sure that the patient can focus on healing, can focus on being a dad, a mom in the family and continue their life and not only stress by re-explaining what they have, what they felt, because some things will not change um, yeah. or should not be said twice or triple or four times. Yeah, or you be sent home and then have to be readmissions because the, um, the whole treatment was not sufficient enough for you As to well. understand yep. it quite well. And that brings us to the third uh, point then, of course, which is uh, one of the biggest discussions that we had, definitely because then we were also talking with the home care organizations, and that is the process of remote care, where we were talking about patient monitoring, I'm reading here from the screen, patient interventions, patient education, and patient experience. I remember during these, these discussions that one of the things that um, were... Um, always on the table and that every every founder was mentioning all the time was that it needs to be easy for the patients right exactly. because there's a lot of digital solutions that that patients mm. don't easily understand or that cannot easily use yeah or um, that are cumberstone uh, regarding remote patient monitoring we do believe that it is very important to be encouraged because the patient uh, needs to be found followed up when he is not necessarily at hospital but mm. when he totally. is at home but then uh, how does remote patient monitoring solution address the patient's reality? Uh, what about the digital literacy of the patient? Exactly. What about answering questionnaires with 40 questions every week? So what are the motivations for the patient to fill in those kind of questionnaires? And from the side of the, the healthcare practitioners, all the alerts that are generated by those kind of remote patient monitoring solutions can be managed and can be uh, uh, embraced in their daily uh, work life because it's, it's new things for them as well. So what are the best solutions to, uh, to monitor the patients at home whilst not adding some workload from the side on, of the healthcare practitioners and uh, being enough uh, motivating for the patients? Yeah. Those are challenges we would like to see answers to it. <laughs> yeah, and I remember that even the, the home care organizations that were that are part of uh, Coalition Next, yeah. they stressed a lot on the patient experience here as well because mm -hmm. there's there's so many challenges, different phases, different tools, um, and so they, it, it needs to be clear and easy for them. Um, you wanted to add something, Dieter? Or? No, I think what we have in, in, in healing patients, it's also the environment that counts, and then it's the lifestyle of people and if you want to have some impact on these things, then you're with the, the home care providers, etc., because they are at home. In the hospital, it's a very clinical, it's a very uh, short shot to, yeah, exactly. to, to make a diagnosis or to make an opinion about the patient and what the treatment can be. Yes, so as you can see, we have three rather clear defined um, needs uh, in, within Coalition Next Belgium. And so if you have a solution, if you are a startup with a specific solution, we would love to know about it. And we would love you to apply it to this um, call for projects. And you can do this um, by doing three things, actually. One is there is an online form that you can complete. 
an online form that is basically 20, 25 questions. It's pretty straightforward. It should take no more than 10 minutes. You should know that inf the information. That information is important for us so that we can categorize all the startups, the different dozens, maybe even hundreds of startups that we might, uh, might receive. A second thing is uh, maybe the biggest opportunity of them all for you, and that is we would ask you to upload an elevator pitch, a one minute video where you explain to us why your solution is so good and why your solution should be implemented in as many, as, uh, many hospitals or home care organizations as possible. And then finally, of course, obligatory, we need to have the dossier. A dossier, it should no, not, not be bigger than 15 pages of PowerPoint. Um, and it's basically categorized in three steps. On the, the first slide has um, the company information. So we'd love to hear about your company and you can go to the next slide. Um, on the first slide, you have the company information. You have the suggested solution that you are proposing. And then following, finally, we also would love to hear about the implementation. Because remember, Coalition Next is all about implementing your solution as quick as possible in the hospital environment within the home care organization environment. And so therefore, it will be important to understand from your dossier what is needed to actually implement your solution. How far and long are you? Can we, can we trust that, we, that it will go quick? Do we, what, what resources do you need? Is change management needed? Are there licenses that need to be bought whatsoever? So these, these three elements are the way, the three elements that we will evaluate basically um, when we will evaluate um, all of the dossiers. It is important to know, we were talking about founders. There's uh, over 20, almost 25 founders now uh, in Belgium. Each of these founders, all of you and your teams and your hospitals and your pharmaceutical companies, they will evaluate all these startups. So it, it's not me, it's not Pascal. Um, obviously we will be present and we will look at these startups, but it will be evaluated by all of the hospitals and by all of the home care organizations and all of the pharmaceutical and medtech companies that we have at uh, within Coalition Next. So that provides you immediately with a huge exposure um, and basically it will be them who will be uh, selecting you first. Um, if this is clear, then maybe we can move to the next phase because you might be saying now, okay, we have a solution. I understand how you will evaluate, but what is the process? Uh, we know what we need to do. We need to build a dossier, we need to upload a video, um, and we need to complete a form. Um, but how will it go? Well, basically there are four steps. And on the next slide, you can see this. Um, the four steps, um, it starts with an eligibility check. I, I love that word, eligibility check. <laughs> um, which will, um, first of all, be a, a check behind the screens that will look into, are you, is the dossier complete? Um, is it in English? Because we ask to have the dossier in English. Um, and then if the, the dossier is complete and we, we find it uh, good enough, it will then move into what we call the selection committee. The selection committee is basically all the founders of Coalition Next, the 20 plus 25 different organizations who will invite their colleagues to e evaluate the different startups. We expect to start the selection committee maybe with approximately about 150 startups, if we can learn from France. Uh, by the way, uh, there, there are not only Belgium uh, They're not only Belgium uh, or, or solution. Uh, uh, we count on Belgium to be uh, the European-wide um, call for project. It's true. In France, they were primarily focused indeed okay. on uh, the, the French market. And we in Belgium, we try to open up uh, to our neighboring countries, but basically to any um, startup in the world if they want to uh, apply. But our promotional efforts have been in France, the Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland, and a bit the UK as well. Um, so we expect quite some startups who will be evaluated um, during the selection committee. Uh, and from that 150 startups, we would love to go to approximately, depending on how many good ones are there, but I mean 30, 40 something startups um, who can then go into the deployment committee after an in-depth analysis that uh, we ourselves will be conducting behind the scenes. And the deployment committee is basically, um, you, can, you can compare it with some sort of matching uh, phase. What will happen um, there is in the selection committee, the, the, prior, the phase prior, we will evaluate all the startups with our hat on from Coalition Next. In the deployment committee, each, start, each um, pharma company, each life science company, each, pharma, uh, each hospital and each home care organization individually can identify the startups that they want to work with. 
So each, each partner, each founder individually can say, that startup is interesting for me. And when we notice that indeed a hospital and a pharma company are together interested in the same and exactly the same startup, then we bring all the parties together around the table to work together on a concrete implementation. Did I explain that right? Was that? Yes, yeah? perfect. Okay. <laughs> you do that well. <laughs> um, because that is important, because we often get that, uh, the, those, um, those requests. How does it exactly go? So we go from um, a screening behind the scene, a selection of 150, which is done by all the founders, to a pitching of about 30, 40, who then, if they are um, selected or when there is a match between the different um, parties that we put around the table to discuss um, implementation. We have now our call for projects open. Um, it's been open since the beginning of September and we will close it on the 31st of October. So it means that you still have about three weeks, I guess, to, um, to complete the dossier. As from that point on, um, every founding member and their teams will be evaluating all the startups uh, and we expect to, the pitches to be happening as from December onwards, depending on holidays, etc. It might maybe even be early 2023, but our purpose is to start um, by December. That's our plan. So if you have a dossier to make, um, don't hesitate, please um, move forward. And so basically, um, why should you apply? Um, there's a couple of arguments um, that I can bring. Actually, there's seven on your screen right now, and I'm happy to briefly uh, elaborate on them um, or to maybe summarize them again. One is we are focused on implementation, and that is exactly what you are looking for. If you are a startup that has a good idea, uh, that has a good solution that can be implemented, we want you. We want to know those startups. It will allow you to immediately talk to the right people to the right targets who need your solution because we have started from um, the needs in the industry, the needs in the healthcare system um, and that's why we made this call for projects. You will be able to immediately present first of all through a dossier to all of the 20 plus different uh, founders um, and potentially even pitch to them. Uh, so, it, Which means that in one effort you can reach a lot of potential uh, clients. We're also still growing, um, and at the moment we're having talks with several uh, pharmaceutical companies, medtech companies as well, um, as well as uh, about a dozen other um, hospitals that might be joining. The implementation can be supported. Sometimes it's a hurdle. Um, even if you find the right person and a person is in need, not every hospital has the resources at that moment. Well, maybe we can help you find those res resources by bringing you together with um, private companies, commercial companies. If you win, if you're in implemented in one or two hospitals, well, maybe it is the beginning of something big because what we've seen in France is that some startups, they, they really started in three, four, five hospitals and are now uh, implemented in over 80 different startups. So this could be the beginning of something uh, and, big. And if I may say, in addition, you know, a, a, a startup or a solution uh, that has the chance to be deployed in, uh, in hospitals or uh, uh, home organization, uh, they get also the attention of uh, um, venture funds. Venture funds. Yeah. And so they can raise money. And some of the, most of the uh, startups that uh, were awarded by Coalition Next in France has, have been able to um, raise, raise money. More money. Oh. That's wonderful. And also, I mean, even if you're not uh, kept, even if you're not immediately implemented, um, VCs can even see you, um, but also hospitals can work together individually with you, or pharmaceutical companies or home care organizations. All of our founding members can reach out to you individually as well. It's not because it's not happening within Coalition Next Belgium that it is not possible. So these are the seven reasons to actually apply for this call for projects. Um, I think we covered about everything, but maybe we might have forgotten or maybe we might have not answered all of your questions that you might have. And so we would like to open up the floor uh, to the audience, to the startups in the virtual room to see whether there are any questions that may arise from this discussion. You can also say that everything was clear and that we look good on camera. Um, that is uh, also wonderful. If not, um, while we wait, what I can do 
is um, I have a couple of questions um, because some startups have reached out to us already. Yes. Quite some, in fact. Um, I don't know how some people found my phone number, but somehow it must be out there. <laughs> um, and I could tell you I've had a lot of um, lovely conversations with very motivated um, startups. And so uh, may, may I say that um, uh, we got some question about um, companies saying, I'm not a startup. Mm. I'm an academic or I'm uh, working in a hospital, I'm a healthcare professional, etc. But I have something that might be interesting for coalition. Of course, the answer is probably yes, yes. you can apply. Indeed, 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 definitely. What we would love to, he to hear is um, we would love to understand who is the um, submitting party. So it, it needs to be one person that we, that we can uh, uh, speak to. We got the question. So we got a, s a question that says, if the solution is not developed yet, it's a prototype, is it pre-fund to complete the development and then implement? Is it pre-fund? I'm not quite sure whether I understand that. Uh, can, can, uh, probably the question is, can you fund the development? We need to finish the development and then fund the implementation. The proof of concept. The proof of concept. I'm but sure. first fund the, 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 the end of the yeah. uh, d development. What we did in France, but uh, go ahead, you, know, go you, ahead. You, you, you can do uh, what you want. You know, the founders are the, are the real proprietary. But it's appreciated <laughs> that you share with us your experience. Uh, what, what, really yeah, <laughs> what we did in France is uh, that this kind of solution were not uh, funded because mm. if you come with something that has not the level, maybe you can, uh, you can tell us, Dieter, but if you don't have the, the level um, necessary to, to implement, uh, maybe you know fund with no uh, guarantee that uh, it will be implementable is a little bit risky. So uh, we we finally decided that we prefer something that is uh, quite robust. But maybe you can have another idea. No, I, I fully confirm. Um, we are doing a lot of proof of concepts, etc. What we are trying that where we can find a matchmaking even, but that's maybe just a one-on-one. -on -one. What the ambition was here in Coalition Next was to have something that is ready to go to market and try to speed up the implementation ready to market. And to these companies, I would say, or to these ideas, <coughs> I would say, it's our ambition to go for an extra next year. Make sure you're aligned with us next year and then yeah. send in. Yeah, I think indeed, I mean, there's, there's a lot of accelerators out there that are funding great IDs. There's, there's, there's amazing accelerators in Belgium. Uh, some of them are even we, we work together with. Um, but the purpose of, 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 of Coalition Next, first and for, foremost, is to find solutions that we can uh, implement. There are accelerators, but there are also non-for-profit organizations such as Life Tech Brussels that can also coach uh, startups without financing them, but directing them to the right uh, contact persons if they are looking for developing their proof of concept or yeah, or looking for subsidies or grants. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's also a strength of coalition is that there is a diversity of uh, players that can help the startups, but then maybe the answer is, uh, if you don't have yet the proof of concept, we you will be redirected to the, the right stakeholder. Yeah, and definitely within Coalition Next, I think um, it, it might be good. I mean, you can always apply, but the chances yeah. that you will be um, retained is a little bit smaller. Obviously, you have some visibility, but um, it might be a little bit small. Let's go. The second question is quite the same. Exactly. But, uh, have a look at the third one. The, the third one is specific, a question to, um, to be able to submit from Colombia, yeah. uh, working in a different part of the world. I would say, technically speaking, you can. Um, uh, it, there's, there's, technically speaking, no reason why you cannot submit if you are from Colombia. Do realize that to implement something in a, s a specific country, you need to uh, take into account that you will be working a lot with um, hospitals, with the, some of the other uh, founders. Um, so this will require frequent meetings, it will, this will require uh, frequent calls. That and to comply also with the local regulations. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, we will also look into to what extent that you are um, in line with different regulations, if that is applicable to your um, specific solution, of course. Um, yeah, one of the questions that I also ask while we um, 
um, we'll wait maybe some other questions, is how much money is available? And, and how, is it, how is the funding done? I mean, that is the question that, that people always ask me, yeah, but how much money is available? And I think that the, um, the reason for that question comes from um, the, the way that typical accelerators work. Um, because typical accelerators, they say that they invest, I don't know, 50K, 100K, 250K in a startup, and in return, they receive uh, equity. Now, there's two things I want to say here. First of all, Coalition Next is not about equity. Um, we focus on implementation, and in return, there is no equity. Um, the funding is re purely related to the implementation and will be discussed uh, together after the de deployment committee. So if we notice that a pharma company and a hospital all are both interested, of multiple pharma companies and multiple hospitals potentially are interested in the same startup, we bring them around the table to see what what they want to achieve with the implementation and what is also needed to implement. And there we will try to find um, common grounds. We will try to solve the potential hurdles. Um, we will try to identify the resources that are needed to, to, to implement. And that is where the funding might potentially happen. So we can imagine, and I'm, I'm putting on the spot here, uh, Azel, but we can imagine that, Dit that Dieter has an interest in a certain startup and that MSD has the same interest. Um, then we will try to find um, a common ground, and we will see what is needed to implement your startup, for example. And this, must, this might require some resources, and then MSD can potentially decide or see how they can help in finding those resources, bring those resources forward, or whatever uh, might be possible. Mm -hmm. Yes, e exactly. So it will depend on, um, on if there is a perfect match with a pre-existing need in a healthcare organization, should it be an hospital or a home care organization, and together they will have defined what they need to implement, when and how much resources it will uh, take to deploy that solution in that specific setting. And if there is a match with our objective or the, the one of another pharma company, then MSD or another pharma company might uh, support the project, but it will really depend on case by case uh, situation. Yeah. yeah. And I remember in France, um, every year, there's a question that you ask to all the, the different pharma stakeholders, pharma founders in Coalition Next, how much money do you have to implement or to fund startups? And they all say, we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, if there's good startups, we might have more. If there's no good startups, then maybe we don't have money. So it's, it's really depending on the quality and the, the connection that you find, the uh, opportunities that uh, there are. At the end of the day, they finally support more than expected. So yeah. uh, they are more generous. <laughs> but that's because there are so many good startups, of course. Um, and well-identified hospital or healthcare needs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's the most important thing. Uh, you need to be able to implement it in the right... I think uh, there are some other questions. Um, does it mean that several companies can succeed after the deployment committee? Yeah, um, several startups um, can indeed be um, supported. Um, and indeed, they can be supported by different life science companies as well. Um, next question. We are not a startup, but a distributor active in launching and supporting innov innovations within the Belgian and Netherlands market can we also file or some project uh, that in line with different goals you can definitely um it, it's not we always talk about startups uh, um, it's, yes, it's it's projects uh, yeah it's my mistake um and any inno innovative solution that can help us um solving the needs that come from um the, the industry and that uh, are interested as well by pharmaceutical companies can needs support. from the healthcare organizations yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so uh, ready to start projects or products, um, mm. no matter who develops them. Yeah, exactly. Um, totally agree. And then the, the first line, if uh, yeah. an organization has multiple solutions or if they have, because that's something I received, if they have a solution for multiple um, um, needs that we needs, had. For yeah, forward. for instance, for uh, heart disease and for oncology, mm. do they have to apply twice? Mm or just once? That was one of the questions I received and it's very similar to the one I see there on top. Yeah, I think I, have, I had both questions as well. So first of all, if you have solutions, if you have a solution that is agnostic, um, but you have also some proof points in specific domains, 
Um, you don't need to apply it twice to me, but you need to clearly mention it. Yes. Um, I, can, I can imagine that um, particular um, commercial companies or, or pharma companies or medtech companies might be interested in specific domains. Hospitals might be may, maybe more open to, uh, to, 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 to different domains. Um, so it's very interesting to, um, to have it mentioned um, both. Another question that I had, which is pretty similar to this question here as well, is some people have solutions for both our first or second or our third needs. Um, and they're, they're, they're then asking me, for which one do we need to actually apply? Um, my answer to that is um, try to be as concrete as possible and in in, in the, the need that you try to solve. Um, I know that there's a lot of startups out there, a lot of solutions that exist that can solve a lot of things. Um, but what we want to know is maybe what is the solution that is most concrete and that might tempt um, hospitals to get started with. If it's too vague, um, maybe you should not focus on it first. You can mention it in, in my, as a potential growth opportunity, but my suggestion would be try to be as concrete as possible in the dossier um, so that we can understand this is where we can start tomorrow. Even if you can do more, um, that would be great for the future then, and you can definitely manage, but we want to understand what we can do tomorrow with you and where you have the best chance of um, getting success. But if well mentioned in the file, they should not apply several times if it's the same company behind. Huh? Exactly. So we'll all agree. And maybe in the application, try to say this is the goal that we think that we can achieve in one year. Maybe this gives a little bit of focus on what to champion for one of the three challenges. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think we, th these were all the questions that I got. I don't see any online questions anymore. Um, maybe one was, but we touched upon Colombia, a foreign structure, any company can basically apply, but we will look at it, how easily it is again to implement in Belgium based on the language that you have, the teams that you have, the, the, the regulation that you can comply to. Um, and so with that said, um, I think we are done with the with the press conference uh, so again if you're hesitating to join what i can tell you is the seven things that i mentioned earlier we are focused on implementation we can help you get implemented faster because we bring you in contact with the right targets you will present one time to all of the founders that that are part of coalition next 20 plus now but soon probably 30 because we are growing if there is a hurdle to implement, we will try to solve them. This is the power that we bring forward. Um, and if you can actually win uh, in Coalition Next, this could be the beginning of something far bigger. And e but even if you lose, it's not the end because you have a, you've had an, a huge exposure um, and it might be even coming in next year's as well. And the final word is for No, no, give, give the final date. Uh, the final date again, it's yes. uh, the 31st of October. So quick. 12 o'clock. <laughs> 12 o'clock at noon. Um, <laughs> so go ahead. <laughs> so when we will have lunch, we will already looking into the, in the, the first dossiers. Anyways, uh, I thank you for your attention. I thank you for um, being here. If any questions, there is always men multiple ways to reach me um, or to reach any one of us. Um, and we will uh, swiftly reply to you. Looking forward to reading your dossier and thanks again for being here. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh. <laughs>